In some physical applications of trigonometry, you'll have an object moving in a circular motion, and you'll want to be able to say how fast that object is traveling based on how big the circle is and how fast the circle is spinning. Basically, how, how long does it take to make a full rotation for that circle? For example, uh, there are an amazing number of different carnival type attractions that spin people in a circle. And if you're designing one of these attractions, you would want to be able to say how fast people are moving. You could do that um, as long as you can just say how big the circle is, the circular ride, so what's, how big is the radius of this ride, and also how quick is the circle spinning. So how long does it take to make a full rotation? In order to know how to do this in a nice, efficient way, you need to know two basic things. First, you need to know what radians are. And second, you need to know how we measure speed. So first, radians. I'll give you a little historical background. Um, the ancient Babylonians used degrees to measure angles. So that's where you just take a circle, you cut it up into 360 even parts, and each even part is one degree. That's what most people are familiar with when they think of angles. But the Greeks thought of angles in a completely different way. They measured them completely differently. So they figured out that if you take an angle in the center of a circle and you measure the length it cuts out on the edge of a circle, so the arc length that it cuts out, the number of radiuses or radii inside of that arc length will always be the same no matter how big your circle is. So the same angle will always cut out a length along the edge of one radius, no matter how big the circle is. And the Greeks called that particular angle one radian. The angle that cuts out a distance of two times the radius, they call two radians, and so on. Uh, so you need a little more than three radians to get halfway around the circle. In fact, the exact number that you need is pi, and that's where the number pi comes from. So if you've got an angle theta and you want to say how many radians it is, the equation is you just take the arc length, so the distance cut out on the edge of the circle, and you divide it by the radius. That tells you how many radiuses, how many radii are inside of that arc length. And we usually denote arc length by s, so we'll write it as s over r equals theta. I want to hold on to this formula, um, but I want to hold on to it in a slightly different form. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by r, and we'll get s equals r times theta. That's how we'll hang on to it. So that's radians. The second thing you needed to know was how we measure speed. And the most common way that we interact with speed is in cars. And we measure speed in cars typically as miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So miles per hour is a distance divided by a time, and that is our basic measurement for speed. Um, we're already using S for arc length, so we'll use V for speed, V or minus of velocity. So speed is miles per hour or kilometers per hour, and um, that represents the distance over time. So the equation that we'll get is V equals D over T. The only distance that we're talking about in this type of situation where we've got circular motion is the arc length S. Um, so instead of writing D for the distance, we'll write S there, and that's how we'll hang on to it, V equals S over T. So now that we've refreshed on those two ideas, we're ready to talk about how fast something is moving when it's moving in a circle. So let's say we have a circle of radius r. We need to be able to talk about how fast the circle is spinning. So we need to talk about how fast it's rotating. Um, we need to talk about a rate of rotation. So one way to do this is to say how many times it rotates per unit time. And then another way to say that is to say it in terms of radians. How many radians does it go through per unit time? So this rate of rotation, we can just think of as your angle theta over t. And the variable people usually use for this is a lowercase Greek omega. It looks like a loopy w. 
And the term that they usually give to this is angular speed. So rate of rotation is called angular speed. And then the kind of speed that we talked about earlier is usually referred to as linear speed. So that V equals S over T will be linear speed. All right, let's think about our um, carnival ride where you've got people spinning around in a circle. And let's say we know the radius, let's say it's 20 feet. And then let's say that this ride is making one full rotation every two seconds. So we know that omega is one rotation for every two seconds, r is 20 feet, and then we wanna find v, we wanna find the linear speed. So the question is, is there a nice relationship between v and then this r and w, r and omega that we already know? Let's think about it. v is s over t, and we need some way to get from distance traveled to the angle through which you're rotating. So we have this equation S equals R times theta that will allow us to get from the distance traveled to the angle through which you're rotating. And now we're in business. You can see theta over T, which is equal to omega, is in this expression now. So if we take this R theta over T and rewrite it, as r times theta over t, then you can see omega right there in the equation. So it turns out that the linear speed v is just equal to the radius times the angular speed. And that's pretty awesome. You just take your angular speed, the rate at which you're rotating, multiply by the radius, and that's how fast people are moving. So in our example, uh, we're we're going to take our radius of 20 feet, but our omega is in terms of rotations right now. We just need to convert it into radians. So one rotation for every two seconds is how many radians for every two seconds? One, one half of a rotation is pi radians. So one full rotation is two pi radians. And then the twos cancel. So our omega is pi radians for every second. So now the linear speed is just going to be 20 feet times pi radians per second. So 20 pi feet per second. Pi is about 3.14, so this is about 62.8. And uh, we probably would have a better idea of what this really means if we convert it into miles per hour. So a straightforward conversion can do that for us. And if you work through it, you'll see that this comes out to about 43 miles per hour. It would be interesting to know how this speed would change if at the beginning, instead of saying that the rate of rotation was run, one rotation for every two seconds, we said it was something else. If we change omega, how does that change V? Or if we change the radius from 20 feet to something else, how would that change the speed? It's not too complicated to think about, so I'll let you think about that. Have a good one. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like button so that other people will be able to find it more easily. If you have questions or comments for me, please leave them down below. And if you wanna support the channel, the best way to do that is to come to my office, give me some money. Um, I'm only accepting $100 bills right now, but it doesn't matter how old it is or how new it is, any $100 bill will go a long way to helping your favorite math professor artist channel.